Cool. Hi, everyone. How are you? Okay. It's so good to see you. Thank you for joining me. I'm so excited. I've just been at home, which is honestly, I'm trying not to complain. It's been kind of a gift because it's very rare that I get to stay in one spot for a long enough time to unpack a suitcase and dive into reading. Um, so I've just been spending a lot of time in bed and just diving through books and revisiting old memories. And I have been trying to finish this book three manuscript and it's, there's nothing more inspiring to me than getting into a room, getting into a room full of people and doing workshops and connecting with everybody. And I feel like when we get together and we write together, it's just something magical happens. And so I wanted to do this to connect and to write things together and create together. And I think it's just going to be really fun. So I hope you have pen handy, backup pens in case you run out, pencils are sharpened, notebooks, paper. I hope you're sitting somewhere quiet. We're going to write about two or three poems today and I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to log on and get started um, and also just to get comfortable and get your supplies ready. So I usually do workshops. I don't do them often, but when I do them, I do them in person and I do them in small groups about for about, about 14 to 25 people. Um, and at the end, we always share our pieces and we always talk about them. So at the end of this, I'm going to invite some people to join me, I guess, which we're going to figure out how to do that by the end. And we're going to share. Um, so a lot of people often ask me what my process is and I don't really know what my process is yet. I'm still trying to figure it out, but something that I think works for me, no matter where I am is the time that I write. So writing in the morning and then writing really late at night. Writing in the morning is great because I feel like I'm fresh. You know, the day hasn't totally left me defeated yet. And I feel more positive and I'm just free. And so I write in the morning and then I like to write when the world goes to sleep because that's when I feel like I can sit back and I can process the things that I've heard on the things I've heard in that day and the things that I've experienced. And there's just something about nighttime that's just so intimate that I think I can produce a lot of my, I guess like darker writing. So it's like all the positive, happy-go-lucky stuff happens in the morning. It's like all sunshine and rainbows. And by the evening, I'm like depression, anxiety, it's deep. Um, so those are two things that help me and I experience writer's block a lot. And what helps me deal with that is free writing. And so that's what we're going to do today. All the activities are free writing activities. And I'm sure that all of you have done free writing at some point in your life. Free writing is exactly what it sounds like. So what we're going to do is we're going to write, but we're going to let go of control. And we're going to write exactly what comes into our mind. The first thing, the first thought, raw, unedited. We're not going to revise it. We're not going to sit and think about it. We're not going to be embarrassed by it. We're just going to write the first thing that comes to mind. And I always do free writing with paper and pen because with a laptop, it is so easy to backspace and enter and police and edit yourself. And then I realize I never really get any real writing done because before I even allow myself to get in, I've already edited myself and stopped my subconscious from doing the deeper work. And so free writing is stream of consciousness and all of the activities are going to be revolved around that. And a lot of writers free write because it helps them overcome writer's block. And I think free writing produces the rawest work that I've done. Uh, I'll just free write sometimes for in my writing sessions for the first maybe 15, 20 minutes is all free writing. And then I'll look back at it and I'll read it. And most of it sounds like I'm going nuts, which is okay. But there will be a couple gems in there and I'll take those out and those will become poems. So... I think it's 106, so why don't we get started? 
let's see. So the first thing that we're going to do, and I've done, I do this activity a lot in my writing workshops. Uh, it's a poem in the form of a letter. And I do this one a lot because one, anybody can do it, whether you're writing for the first time or this is more, more of a profession for you. It's really easy for anybody to grasp. We've all, we all know what letters are. We're all familiar with formats. Um, and I write letters a lot because again, it helps me overcome that writer's block that I experience often and they're just easy to do. So if I'm not happy with somebody or if I've upset somebody, I will go into my writing session and write a letter about it. So that's what we're going to do. And remember, there's no goal in mind when we're writing. We're not worried about rhyming. We're not worried about technique. We're not worried about if it makes sense or not. All we're worried about is tapping into our subconscious and it shouldn't feel like work because our minds are already so busy and they're already buzzing. So all you got to do is let go of the wheel, let go of the control and you know, your subconscious is going to do the rest. So exercise one. So I want you all to at the top of your pages, I want you all to write dear and you're going to Pick a person from your past, present, someone you hope to meet, someone you haven't met yet, someone living, someone dead. You can pick anyone. You can even pick yourself, past, present, or future. But at the top of your page, you're going to write, dear. Wow, my writing's terrible. And then where the blank is, you're just going to put in the person that you pick. And once you've done that, on the next line, the first line of your letter is going to be, I have been dying to tell you. So you're going to write that down. I have been dying to tell you. So this is how it'll look. Dear, I picked my mom. And the first line is, I have been dying to tell you. Wow, I really need to improve on this handwriting, but that's besides the point. Okay. So once you all have that, I'm just going to wait a minute for everybody. It's really odd to do this when I'm sitting alone in my room because I'm just, yeah. Anyways. So dear blank. Anybody from your past, present, future, someone you haven't met yet, someone you want to meet, someone living, someone dead, you write their name down and the first letter, the first sentence of the poem is, I have been dying to tell you. And when I say begin, you're going to start free writing. The first thing that comes to your mind, you're not going to edit it, you're not going to think about it, you're not going to scratch anything out. And this activity is going to take about 15 minutes. And what I'm going to do is every minute and a half, I'm going to interject and I'm going to say a random word. It's not going to make any sense at all. It's going to be super random. Like I might say the word chair. And when you hear that word, you're going to immediately take that word and write the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear that word and include that word in your piece. Again, it, won't make any sense because you're gonna be like chair what the hell does that have to do with the person that I'm writing about but that's okay I think it's just about thinking out of the box and seeing how creative we can be with metaphors and the thing reason that I love this activity so much is that we all start off with the same line I've been dying to tell you and we're all gonna be given the same ten words but the wonderful thing is that we're all gonna come up with different ways of using them and I think that's really beautiful so let's begin. I'm going to set a timer and dear blank, I have been dying to tell you and begin.
Remember, no editing. Doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. Our thoughts never really make sense. They always interject each other. They always interrupt each other. They're never really finished. So no scratching anything out. Just let it flow. The first word is box. Box. For those of you just jumping on right now, we're writing a letter and on the top of the page you write dear and you pick whoever you want and the first line is I've been dying to tell you. And the first word that you're going to use is box. that thought and I'm going to give you the second word. The second word is peanut. The second word is peanut. Yes, I was eating peanuts last night while writing this list. So there you go. For those of you just logging on, we're in the middle of writing a letter. So you can just pick whoever you want. And in the corner you write, dear, whoever, I've been dying to tell you. The third word is green, as in the color. Third word is green. Remember, first thing that comes to mind, this is, exercise is about letting go. It's about discovering what's happening in our subconscious that we might be ignoring. The fourth word is clock. as in the thing that tells time.
the words again if you miss them. And yes, if you're just logging on, this will be available in stories later, but I'm gonna be respectful to the people that are already midway. So you can start from the beginning when I post it on the profile. All right. The fifth word. is fingernails. Fingernails. <laughs> if your hand is hurting while you're writing, you can slow down. Almost halfway done. And the next word is cotton, as in the plant or the fabric. Cotton. If you need the words again. I don't know how y'all are writing and typing at the same time. Next word, so this is word number seven, is video. Like a YouTube video. Just a couple more words left, so stay with me. The eighth word is blood. 
B L O O D blood. Finish that thought, and I'm going to give you the ninth word. I can't wait to hear all these letters afterwards. Okay. The ninth word in your letter is horse. As in the animal, horse. Thirty more seconds, and I'm going to give you the last word. And the last word is envelope, as in the thing that you put your letter in before you send it off, envelope. I'll give you about 30 more seconds to wrap it up. The last word is envelope. Fifteen seconds. Ten. And pencils down. Okay, cool. How was that? Somebody said it's not pronounced envelope. I'm really sorry. I pronounce it envelope. <laughs> How was it? I'm really excited to hear your letters. But you know what? I was told that the live actually cuts you off after an hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the sharing at the end. We're going to write all the poems first. So the second activity, we're going to turn to a fresh page, is... A list poem and a list poem is exactly what it sounds like. List poetry refers to poems that are written in lists and the list items can be full sentences or they can be single words. It doesn't matter and the words don't have to rhyme. 
and the thing that connects the words is the story. And usually that story comes from the title. The title and what the subject matter is, is the thread that sort of ties the items together. And so I will help you come up with that story by giving you a prompt. And don't worry, there is a lot less writing involved in this activity because I know the first one was a little bit long. So this one's, this one's easier. It's only going to take you five minutes and I'm going to join you and write my list as well because I'm not going to interject with this one. I'm just going to give us five minutes and we're just going to free write through it. So I also write a lot of list poems because... Like the letter writing, list poems help me understand what I'm going through and where my head is at. Head is at. Cause so often what happens is, at least this is what happens for me. I'll just be like overwhelmed and anxious about all these different things. And I think that this is the reason that's causing me to feel this way. And then I'll start writing a list poem and realize, oh, that's not the thing making me mad at all. It's actually this other thing. Um, so if I go through my journals, I have tons of list poems and they range from everything. I mean, I have list poems about things that are making me upset right now, things I have to be grateful for, things I wish I could have changed about my childhood, things that I'm grateful for in terms of like what I grew up with. I have so many, so many, so many, so many, so many lists. And the reason I write them is more for therapeutic reasons. I, they help me look at my thoughts and pinpoint exactly what is happening and what's going wrong um, or what's going right. And so we are going to, you've probably read a lot of list poems and didn't even know they were list poems. And although a lot of these list poems that I write never end up being published because like I said, it's free writing, stream of consciousness, so a lot of it doesn't really make any sense. There's always like some poems where I'll have a gem or two that actually I'll take out of that list poem and then they are further edited and become their own pieces. And that's what I love about free writing. It just produces some of the rawest work. So if you haven't read a list poem before and are not familiar with it, I've picked a poem that I wrote maybe a couple of months ago, maybe it was last year, um, and I thought I would read it to you, and it'll kind of give you an idea of how the structure can work for your poem, the one that you're going to write. Um, and it's not a structure that you have to use or that you have to copy, it's just an idea for people who haven't read list poems. This one's a little bit dark, so I warn you. Um, it's called Depression Is. Depression is silent. You won't hear it coming. Sits at the corner of my bed, waits for me to get up, and walks into me like a ghost. We spend our days together in the same body. Is the loudest voice in my head. The constant need to crawl back into bed and sleep for 18 more hours is the amusement park after everyone's left. A slice of the wrist, a ghost town that I'm lost in, a weight hanging by a rope from my throat down to my belly, an abandoned shopping mall. I am somewhere between living and dead. It feels like I'm undying. I can feel misery at a molecular level. My soul is exhausted. Depression is me screaming at the top of my lungs, but no sound escaping. So, that list poem made sense to you because I told you what the name of the poem was. It was Depressionist. That was the name of my list. But had I just gone right into it, it would have just sounded super random. None of the items really connect that well. And so we're going to write something like that right now. But, you know, we're going to keep it a little bit positive because I think it's a difficult time for everyone. So let's just create something a little bit more hopeful and a little bit more bright. So on a fresh page, 
I want you to write at the top a list of things I can share with the world. So the name of your poem is going to be a list of things I can share with the world. Name of this poem, a list of things I can share with the world. And I'm going to set the timer for five minutes for this one. And I'm not going to interject. You're just going to come up with your own list. And it's, like I said, it's going to be easy because you're not going to think about it. You're just going to let your subconscious do the work. Let go of the control. Let the mind take the wheel. Your thoughts are already buzzing and busy. And so you're just going to let them take over. And we're going to create a list of 10 things. Ten things, and the title is A List of Things I Can Share with the World. So what we're going to do is when I say begin, you're going to come up with a list of ten things that you can share with the world. And they can be physical things. They can just be things that you can't hold. So maybe it's kindness. Maybe it's your... You have a really great singing voice and you haven't shared it yet. And that's something that you think that is going to brighten people's day. It can be anything. So don't worry about rules or if it makes sense or not. The first 10 things that come to your mind. And I'm going to join you and I'm going to share my list with you all at the end. So we're writing a list of things I can share with the world. And we're going to start the timer and you have five minutes. And begin. A list of things I can share with the world. And in case you missed it, we're writing a list of things that you can share with the world. I don't want to share mine yet, but we're writing 10 things that we can share with the world. And we have about three minutes left. They can be full sentences, they can be single words, mine or both.
this is a lot harder than I thought. Ooh, some of you are already done. I'm on number six and I can't think of anything else. We are, we have a minute and a half left on the clock. And if you're done, maybe you wanna take this time to read over your letter, read over your list, see if you wanna share it at the end. I wish there was a way that we could share it with each other through like a chat or something. But anyways, maybe next time figure that out. Thirty seconds left. pencils down. Okay. I got up to eight. That was a lot harder than I thought it was. Um, okay. I can't wait to share it at the end. Okay. Let's turn to a fresh page. And if you're wrapping up, just give yourself a couple seconds. And then when you're done, you can turn your page over and we're gonna start exercise number three. And this one is gonna take a little bit longer. So, if I go over the hour, what I'm gonna do is just log back on again, and then we'll, we'll just take it from the top. So this one is more poem style. It, it's, you've heard of this in your English classes, we're gonna be writing what's called a sonnet. And I'm not gonna go into the different rules of sonnets in terms of like meter and syntax and all that stuff. I'm gonna keep it simple. We're gonna use, a sonnet is a 14 line poem. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write a sonnet that's 14 lines. And the exercise is gonna take about 15 minutes. And again, it's gonna be free writing. So just write the first thing that comes to your mind. And I'm gonna take you through each of the lines. So you are going to pick a random object, any object that's inanimate. It can be examples that people have used in the past have been couch, carpet, house, knife, pen, mug, TV, fork, doll, book, anything. Pick a random object. And that could be the title of your poem. So if the object that I pick is, I don't know, let's just say pencil. Pencil is gonna be the title of your piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read out a question. I'm gonna read out 14 questions in total and you're gonna answer each question. So each of your lines is gonna be an answer to one of my questions. It's very hard to explain. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna begin and I'm gonna take you through it and it's gonna be a lot easier if we just get started. Um, so pick an object. If you're still thinking about it, I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds. 
I'm super indecisive. I find it, it can be like the littlest decision and it takes me like five hours to make. The exercise will take about 15 minutes. So we're gonna have 14 questions and about a minute to answer each question. We're not gonna think about it too much. Just write the first thing that comes to mind. And the reason that I love this activity, it's harder than the other two because it's not that personal. And it's really out of the box because you're gonna try to personify this object that you've now picked. Try to keep your answers down to one line, but if you don't, that's also fine. We're not really about following rules here, so it's all okay. So once you have your object, we're gonna start writing our sonnet. So the first line of your poem, you're gonna answer the question, what are you? So because my subject object is pencil, the first line of my poet, poem could be as simple as, I'm a pencil. So every time I read out a question, you're going to answer that question from the point of view of the object that you chose. So the first question is, what are you? What is the object that you chose? Are you cracked? Are you solid? Are you yellow, blue, purple, green? Do you have a color? What are you? And your second question is, remember you're answering this from the point of the view of that object that you chose. So you're going to pretend to be that object and answer that question as if you're that object. Question two, how are you feeling right now? How are you feeling right now? Depending on what object you chose, you might feel ignored, you might feel neglected, you might feel loved, you might feel important, you might feel worthless. How are you feeling right now? Remember not to think about it too hard. Just write the first thing that comes to your mind. It shouldn't feel like work. This is supposed to be a meditative and therapeutic and creative experience. Question three. Where would you rather be? From the point of view of that object that you picked, where would you rather be? Would you rather be stowed away? Would you rather be used by human beings? Would you rather be ignored? Would you rather be in a different country, in a different place, in a different setting? Where would you rather be? And I'll repeat. Some of the earlier questions. The first line is, what are you? How are you feeling right now? And we're on question three, which is, where would you rather be?
Would you rather be with other objects that are like you? Would you rather be separated from them? The fourth question. What relationships do you have? Do you have a family? Does this object have a family that you chose? Does the object have friends? If you're a fork, do you get along well with spoons? Do you get along well with other forks? I don't know. <laughs> How do you get how do you get along with other objects that are exactly like you? What relationships do you have? We're going to finish that thought and we're going to go on to question five. Five is what do you dream of doing? What does this object that you are, what does that object dream of doing? Does it dream of breaking? Does it dream of being donated? Does it dream of being passed on to a different owner? Does it dream of being held? What do you dream of doing? What do you dream of doing? The next question is, what worries you? What worries you? Do you worry about, do you have an expiration date? Does that worry you? Do you worry about rusting? What worries you? I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because I think I'm gonna get kicked off live in about nine minutes. And we have about Eight questions left. So the sixth one was what worries you? Seven. What would you like others to think of you? The humans that are around you, what do you want them to think of you? What do you want, maybe the other objects that you're stowed away with, what do you want them to think of you? If you're a book, what do you want the other books to think of you? What do you want your owner to think of you? What would you like others to think of you? And remember, it's just, a sentence or a line or even a word it doesn't matter it's not long it's only a sonnet so it's 14 lines what would you like others to think of you eight 
What keeps you awake at night? What are the thoughts that you have that keep you awake? Are there external things? Are there noises? Are there sounds that keep you awake? Are other things loud around you? What keeps you awake at night? I'll repeat the first eight questions before I move on to the ninth. One was what worries you? Two, how are you feeling right now? Three, where would you rather be? Four, what relationships do you have? Five, what do you dream of doing? Six, what worries you? Seven, what would you like others to think of you? Eight, what keeps you awake at night? And the ninth question for the ninth line of your sonnet is, what is the best thing you've ever done? What is the best thing you've ever done? This object that you are, did this object save a life? Was, did this object feed someone? What is the best thing you ever done? And it doesn't even have to be that deep. Did do you make somebody laugh once? Were you ever silly? Or have you just been chilling and relaxing your whole life as a subject? What is the best thing you've ever done? So you could write... If I was a pencil and somebody used me to write a super awesome song with it, I would write, I was, I wrote one of the best songs in history or something like that. <laughs> it doesn't have to be super complicated. 10. What is the worst thing that you've ever done? So because mine is pencil, I would probably write something like, I once broke in the middle of writing a test. That would be the worst thing I've ever done as a pencil. What is the worst thing you have ever done? Eleven, what makes you feel guilty? What makes you feel guilty? Now I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to answer each one because we're almost at the hour mark. What makes you feel guilty? Thirteen. Ooh, no. Twelve. What is your favorite time of day? Or what is your favorite time of night? What is your favorite time of day or night? I'm, I feel like I picked the funniest example. If I'm a pencil, I would say that my favorite time of day or night is probably 
at nighttime when everybody else is asleep so that I can just hang up on myself and not have to be working. 13. What is the point of your life? That's a deep question. But remember, one line. What is the point of your life? I have about a minute and 50 seconds remaining before I'm kicked off, so I will log back on. I don't even know the terms for this thing. Get back on live, I guess, once that happens, but I'm going to give you your last couple prompts. So the 13th question was, what is the point of your life? What is the point of your life? And the last question is, how would you like to be remembered? You as this object, how would you like to be remembered? How would you like to be remembered? And the one before that, in case you missed it, was, what is the point of your life? And the last one is, how would you like to be remembered? And you can start wrapping up, finish that thought, and I'm going to jump back on live, and I'm going to ask volunteers to jump on with me. Don't troll me, okay? Do not troll me. Serious participants only. <laughs> and you're going to, you can just like share any of the 